don't forget that this tutorial is part of a series of tutorials which you can access on our YouTube playlist or alternatively if you would like to you can purchase the whole course on Udemy there should be a link to the YouTube playlist and a link to our Udemy course which should always provide the best price in the video description hopefully now you're a little bit more comfortable if you weren't already with the idea and principle of a primary key it's a unique value that we can use to identify individual records within the database i think that will make more sense if you're not familiar with that once we start querying the database so once we actually start to extract data from the database so let's now try and move this learning outcome forward to better understand the basics of establishing relationships within a relational database so we need to be able to identify the different types of relationships so i'm going to take you through a method of of doing that and then we can apply that knowledge to actually then build the relationships between the database tables so generally there are three types of relationships that we might develop between our tables a a one-to-many relationship or a many-to-one relationship and that might be described as a foreign key that's what we're going to focus on um, building first and then we have a many-to-many -many relationship and a one-to-one -one relationship so i will introduce you to these concepts as we move forward and apply them to our models but let's first of all take a look at the existing models that we've created and start to think about relationships what that means between the tables so taking a look at our models we need to identify where there are potential relationships and what that means is that the data in one table is related in some way to data in another table and ultimately why we're building these relationships between tables is that we're going to be using these relationships when we start to extract data from our tables by building relationships between tables it means that when we do try to extract data from say the product table any related data can also be extracted queried and extracted and returned now don't worry if this isn't really making sense i'm just trying to summarize some of the core concepts for us to better understand and i feel as though that once we perform more exercises uh, related to querying and returning data from the database this is going to make a little bit more sense and i will uh, iterate on this and bring this theory back in to help you better understand what we are trying to learn in this tutorial later on when we start to query the database right so let's first of all think about relationships right so let's take the product table so we I try to start with the table which is the most predominant this is a e-commerce uh, inventory database so the main context here um, is probably the product that's what we're trying to model data for so I'm going to take the product table and just ask myself a basic question is the product line table related to products now you may not realize that there is a relationship because I haven't fully explained the reasoning for product and product line table so the idea here is that most of the product information that we're storing data about is going to be in the product table now within this setup I have um, generated this database on the premise that I'm going to be storing not only a single product, but a product will also have a sub product. So, take for example, a basic example, a shoe. So, I'm going to sell a line of shoes. Uh, so, let's like, take any type of shoe. Any type of shoe, not only would I need to store one shoe, but that shoe might come in different colors and different sizes so there we have our different product lines related to that one product so we can see how the data is going to be entered into the database in the, on the right hand side here we have the product table so in this case we have or we enter the first product which is shoe one and then we go to the product line table and now we need to add all the uh, product lines so this shoe might come in different variety of sizes and colors so we have four five six color red green and blue and there's plenty more that we could probably add there but you can start to see that the data in the product line that is all related to product id one in the product table 
So here we have a relationship. There is clearly a relationship between shoe one, the data in shoe um, in ID one here in the first row of the product table, and the first three in this case uh, rows in the product line table. How this data has, for example, moved into separate tables, uh, that is really a detail of actually the design process. If you follow a normalization process to build your tables, your data might be spread over multiple tables because of the rules that are defined in the normalization process, a, a design um, tool that we can use when we're developing a, a database design. So there might be, there might be multiple tables um, which the product table is related to, but we found a relationship here and that's between the product and the product line table. So now what we need to do is identify what type of relationship. Is it a foreign key, a one-to-many? Is it a many-to-many -many relationship or is it just a one-to-one -one relationship? So with that process, we can think of that process as a table or in a table like this. So at the top here, we add the product and the product line uh, table. And then we work downwards. So first of all, we ask ourselves a basic question. What's the relationship between the product and the product line? So what we're trying to do first is work from the product to begin with. So we say for one product. So when we do this process, work through this process, we always think of the first item as one. So for one product in the product table, how many uh, things does that relate to in the product line table? Well, we can see from our example that this one product from our table, we always think of one product to begin with, uh, with the table that we start with. So for one record in the product table, in actual fact, in this case, it's related to three. It could be four, it could be 10 product line rows. So we have a one product to many product line. So we define the first relationship between product and product line as a one to many relationship. So now we need to do the reverse. Let's start from the product line. So we start from the product line. So we um, start off with one. So we're here in the second row in the product line, we have a one in the product line uh, field. Now we need to think about the relationship between product line and the product. So when we think about one record in the product line, say the first product, how many records is that associated to in the product table? Well, it's always going to be the case that one product line record is going to be related to one row in the product table. So what we have is a one to one relationship between these two tables from the product line to the product table. So we've detailed that a one to one, and now we need to do a very simple calculation. Now this is uh, working down the column now. So we start from the product column, we work downwards, there's a one, there's a one. So the final result is a one. So how that comes to one is because each um, relationship here in the column, um, there is a one in the product column. So if there's two ones, it's gonna finish off with a one. If there's any instances in that column where there is an M, then it's always going to resolve to an M. So because there's an M in the product line column, the final result is always going to be an M. So if there was two M's, it was going to result in an M. If the M was in the second um, row of the product line, then it st will still be M. So any instance there's an M in the column working downwards, it's going to finalize or finish as an M. So what we have is we've now determined that we have a one to many relationship between the product and the product line, or we could say there is a many to one relationship between the product line and the product. Now that we've defined the one to many relationship, we now need to update the database ERD, include what is known as a foreign key, which is going to be a new field that we're going to place within the product line table. Now, how we identify where the foreign key should go is we always look for the many field or the many side, in this case, the product line, that identifies where the field is going to be placed. In this case, the many is in the product line, so that's where the foreign key or the field is going to be placed. So I just need to update this. So I insert a new row below. I make that into a foreign key. I then add the field. So this is where we need to name the field. So let's go ahead and name this field a product. 
and this is going to be a foreign key so we don't need a um, data type there and now we can build the relationship now remember the many side is the product line so if i start to drag here you can see that there are some symbols so one of these um, symbols is just a line indicating a, a, a single line a one and then on one side we have this crow's foot you can see there potentially if i uh, zoom in a bit there's a crow's foot that identifies the many so in actual fact that's the wrong way around so if i drag from here to there i've now indicated that there is a many to one relationship or a one to many relationship between the product and the product line table now it doesn't necessarily matter too much exactly where you attach this it could be here so it's not necessarily indicating the field it's connected to just the fact that there is a, um, a one to many relationship between product and the product line table so now we continue we just ask ourselves the next question is there a relationship between product data and the product image well yes we are going to be storing images um, about a product but in actual fact we're going to be storing images related to product lines so although there is a relationship between the product and product images is the actual product line that we're going to be storing the image about so remember these images are going to be related to these um, colors or the product line and of course the product line defines the individual product line defines what color the product is so there's not necessarily a direct relationship between the product table data and the product image but there is a direct relationship between the product individual product line say the red shoe and then storing the images about that red shoe so we'll take a look at that shortly so we're saying there isn't any relationship between product and the product image at the moment so product and category so that's the next set of tables so is there a relationship between the category and the product well what are we storing um, here in the table so we just need to ask ourselves that question so if we go through and think about this so the first category is going to be uh, shoes okay what are shoes well um, they're products right so we need to potentially build a relationship between a product and the category because what we want to do for each product that we add into our product table we want to relate that to a category we want to make um, that product or we want to categorize those products so there is a relationship there's a relationship between the data that's in the product table say the red shoe sorry the shoe and what category it's part of well it's, it should be in the shoe category so let's have a look at that relationship so i work through the same process for one product in the product table how many categories is that associated to and this is really dependent at this point upon your particular setup because you might want one product to be part of multiple categories that's just something that you might define in your uh, database in which case it would be a one to many but i'm going to say for simplicity that one product is going to be associated to one category so when i build a new product and add it to my database i'm going to associate that to one category and then we look at the reverse so for one category how many products is that going to be associated to well i might have multiple products connected to a particular category so between category and product i have a one-to-many relationship so i do the maths again and work downwards so product one many because there is a many then it finalizes as a many and in category column there's one and one so it finishes as a one so what i have now is um, i've identified where the foreign key needs to be added in the product table so i can now up, 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 up i can now update the database erd so i'll go ahead and add the category field and then i go ahead and just uh, build the connection to indicate the connection the relationship so as a one little dash and the many crow's foot here uh, so that's the relationship that we have just built so i've added a new field in the product uh, table so let's finish that off by having a look at the product and seasonal events so if i add a new product let's imagine i add a new product and it is um, a christmas line so it is a product that's going to be sold only at christmas right so i add that product in 
how do I know it's going to be part of a seasonal event? So let's go ahead and add a new, sorry for zooming in, add a new seasonal event. Let's call that Christmas. Um, clearly there's a relationship between the seasonal products in the product table and the actual seasonal event. So the data that's stored in the product that is related to uh, data that's stored in the seasonal events. So clearly there's a relationship. So I'll go through the same process. And again, it really depends on your particular business requirements. But I'm going to say that for one product or one product is always going to be associated to one seasonal event, Christmas, Easter. And then I'm going to say that one seasonal event, say Christmas, is going to be associated to many products. That's probably the case. So what I end up with from seasonal events is a one to many relationship and from product and then a many to one relationship. So here I can identify the foreign key that I need to build is going to be in the product table because I've got the M on that side. Okay, and there we go. So I build the um, indicate the relationship with the one to many and I've added the new key in the product table seasonal event. I'll just quickly update that. Obviously that should say foreign key or indicate that it's a foreign key. There we go. The final relationship here in this set of tables is between the product line and the product image. So we aren't going to categorize the products in the product line table. We aren't going to categorize the seasonal events in categories. So that's going to be related only to the product. So for every product line, we're going to add some images related to that product line. So when we return the product lines and make them viewable to the user in their browser, we also want to extract not only the product line data, but also the images that are related to that product line. So there's clear relationship between the data. So let's take a look at the relationship. So again, start with a product image. So for one product image, um, how many product lines is that going to be associated to? So in actual fact, there's only going to be images in this case, and this isn't always going to be the case, um, particularly if you want to use multiple images for multiple products or things. So, but in my case, I'm going to say and restrict it so that one image is related to one product. And then looking at it from the product line table, for one product line, natural fact, there might be multiple images. So we have a one to many relationship from product line to product image. So we end up with the many to one or one to many relationship. I identify where the foreign key should be by looking where the many um, has been identified in this case in the product image. And then I go ahead and update the database ERD here. You can now see that there is a relationship between product line and product image. And I've added the foreign key in the product image table. Now we started with a slimmed down version of what we're going to end up with at the end of this section of the course. We will start to add some more tables shortly when we move to the exercises and start to talk about uh, many to many and one to many relationships. But for now, what we have done is that we've identified the foreign keys uh, between the tables that we've generated so far. So all we need to do now is move to the next exercise where we go ahead and show you how to actually create these foreign keys within your models.